Dan Garanda, and I live in Dubai, Dubai Great Town. I swear by Almighty God that the evidence that I'm about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. It is. Yes. No. Sorry, what is the question? Do I recall? Yes, I recall it. I recall I was present, correct. Not really. It was a soft opening. It was a very small dinner on the outside terrace. My birthday party was after that. Actually, it's uh, stating April 16th. I'm sorry, I think you're referring to later. Yes. Yes. That was my birthday. Correct. And that's when you say that there was a conversation between Dr. Rogers, yourself, and Mr. Carter. Correct. And the conversation is that Mr. Carter says, Mr. Rella, this is my gift to you, my brother. Correct. True. And that's something you could have done absolutely clearly. Correct. And the next thing you say you recall is that Dr. Rogers discussed with you the fee that you set to charge. Correct. And you said Dr. Rogers gave Mr. Rella a pre oxygen examination. Correct. And how do you know that? Because Dr. Rogers was staying with me and was picked up, met by Mr. Kadri, and taken to examine Mr. Roberto. And you say, a few days before surgery, Mr. Kadri could have applied for insurance cover, so that the insurance could have been difficult. Correct. I was present when the phone conversations took place prior to surgery. Dr. Rogers happened to be staying with me. Sorry, you were present what conversation? Conversation between Dr. Rogers and Mr. Kadri about the payment before surgery. Well, that's a different matter. You say Mr. Kadri applied for insurance cover. How do you know that? Because Mr. Kadri had told Dr. Rogers, and Dr. Rogers was waiting for the approval from City Hospital prior to admitting the patient. Well, have you seen any documents in relation to insurance cover? No, I haven't. But all I know is that Mr. Kadri ended up paying with this American Express. Well, we, we all know that. But you made quite a leap from him promising to pay to Mr. Rella to actually pay. So what you suggest there is the explanation. It's just that you've got it slightly wrong. <coughs> the only insurance was Mr. Rella had insurance. Did you, did you know that? I'm assuming, I don't know, okay. but I'm ass the patient. Okay. We're talking about the patient having insurance, not Mr. Kadri having insurance. Mr. Kadri was the employer. So it's the patient having insurance prior the, to the physician admitting the patient for surgery. And when Dr. Rogers was informed that the insurance was not covering, Mr. Kadri paid. I 
do not know. Do you know if any commercial arrangements have been used to contract any insurance? I do not know. So what happened was that Mr. Rell had insurance. It was thought the insurer would pay. And as you say, the insurer pulled out the last minute. I am not saying that, and neither does my statement state that. That's what Mr. Kadri informed Dr. Rogers of. I'm not sure about that. He made the payment a few hours prior to surgery. I think. Mr. Qadri was waiting to see if insurance would cover it or not. So what, what did he promise back in April? That he would pay for the surgery and that it was a gift to Roberto because Mr. Qadri was investing in Roberto and opening the restaurant and that the restaurant was named after his partner. That's what was exactly said. Did he promise that he paid for the insurance? Mr. Qadri promised to pay for the surgery. Actually, actually, the payment arrangement was between Dr. Rogers and Mr. Kadri. Well, Mr. Kadri stated that he was giving it to Roberto Rell as a gift. That's the conversation that I was involved in, more than one occasion. Well, it happened on several occasions because we had several dinners and gatherings with Mr. Qadri prior to Roberto's surgery. Which just take us to the transcript and show me which cross examination is arising out of. Page six, line one, 
first one to pull it onto the last minute. Yes. And then, and then it turns to have you stepped in at the last minute to bring to the cops. Yes, and she said she's not sure about that. She's not sure, what, and then, and then the point was that's inconsistent with Sue. The only question I wanted to ask was which cops this paragraph 16 referring to? It was not in dispute that there were two cops. I think the witness doesn't know. It doesn't matter, I can do this. It does, it does. It's the beginning of the witness is taken very carefully. Well, I can tell the witness something that's not in dispute. Well, I don't accept that. You can ask the witness what? Well, the witness, I think, has already told me that she doesn't know which cost, but you can ask her which cost she's referring to here. You've probably told her the answer already. Paragraph 16. Can you help his lordship as to which cost is being referred to there? Yes. Lord, the cost that was paid to Dr. Rogers was only for the surgery fee, to do the surgery and post-operative care for the doctor to come to the hospital again, visit Mr. Roberto. So paragraph 16, which cost are you referring to? The $27,000 that was paid to Dr. Rogers on Mr. Codrey's American Express. Well, no further questions. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Do you want to ask anything arising out of that? What I was referring to about all of the costs, I met the surgeon's fee. I'm not sure if there was insurance present and if insurance paid for the hospital bed and the hospitalization. That I'm not aware of. The only thing that I am aware of is that Mr. Codrey paid Dr. Rogers for the surgery. Well, I think that's, that's where we agree. That's all we know. That's all I know. Yeah. And you know that the last minute. I know that the surgery was postponed and delayed from the time that the doctor had reserved the operating theater because of insurance complications. Correct. I'm not sure I understand your question. All I know is that Dr. Rogers was paid $27,000 for performing surgery on Mr. Roberto Rella, and Mr. Kaji said that it is a gift from me, my brother. Exactly. Mr. Army, the first sentence of paragraph 17, on the day of the surgery, the insurance company confirmed that they would not cover the cost of the surgery. Uh, did they confirm that to you? Lord, it was... But that's not something you know directly. That's right. It was told to Dr. Rogers, who was... That's not something you know directly. I'm sorry. You, you can't say what the insurance company confirmed or didn't confirm. Because you didn't talk to them. Correct. And in uh, paragraph 16, you say that the insurance company were being difficult. That's something you learned from Mr. Cadry, not from the insurance company. Is that correct? Correct. Well, if, if this had been a properly prepared witness statement, it would have been made clear that it wasn't a direct knowledge. Well, I just wanted to clear it up. 
that was exactly the point I was going to, to all, I don't want to suggest the answer, but your worship. May I sit down, Mr. Jones? Sit down. Yes, Mr. Brown, do you want to uh, call this, recall this occasion? Thank you. Highly unsatisfactory for witness to say all facts and matters are from my own knowledge, unless other than specified. I can find a clarity of 17, the first sentence, which suggests it is from my own knowledge, because she doesn't otherwise specify. But carry on with Mr. Cameron. The statement in that paragraph does say, because the sentence after that. Says exactly the source of the knowledge, and that was the point I was going to seek to clarify. Carry on, Mr. Brown. So sorry, you, are you unable to hear me, sir? Yeah, I'm, I'm reading here. Right. Does it help if I raise my voice? It does. It does, I'm so sorry. Yeah. Paragraph 23 of your... Uh, 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 I'm sorry, I'm sorry, sorry, Mr. Mugavira's statement. A written alcohol policy was introduced in September 2012 after Mr. Cathy became aware that employees were drinking alcohol on the premises while their work clothes and your guests. And then he says, I understood that the UAE Police Criminal Investigation Department could conduct an undercover spot check at any time, and that there was a risk that the restaurant could be fined or lose its alcohol license if employees were seen drinking on premises. You see that? I, I read that. Uh, now, do you know how you came to have that understanding? No. Was that your understanding? I think after the incident, when I had my discussions with, uh, uh, with the finance CFO and with Mr. Main, they made me aware of the, the issues. But was it your understanding that the problem was employees drinking on the premises? 
not drinking on the premises, drinking on on duty on the premises on hours that they're not supposed to be. Drinking on duty? Yes. Not necessarily drinking after 2 a.m.? Well, read the transcript. I, I, I don't understand your question. Read the transcript. Added. And on hours that they're not supposed to be. Well, in that just case, we will not have interruptions. You can make the point later. Well, the, the, the cross examination is going to proceed on a false premise. Well, yeah, it's yeah. not the first time it's done that, but I can deal with that. Thank I'll, you, I'll keep quiet. I'm, I'm well aware of the basis on which this cross examination is taking place, and I don't need your interruptions. Well, I'll, I'll keep quiet for now. Well, That's Mr. McGovern. No, these are your words. It was your answer to my question. I'm sorry, you're talking about paragraph number 23, Mr. Johnson? No, not now. I'm sorry, so what are, you, what are you referring to? I thought you were talking about paragraph 23. Your answer to my question a few moments ago, I'll, yes. read, I'll read you the question and answer. Yes. But was it your understanding that the problem was employees drinking off the premises? And your answer was drinking on the premises. Drinking on the drinking on duty on the premises and yes. that was the then not supposed to be. Yes. Now do you, are you referring there to drinking on duty full stop or drinking after hours? According to the policy, either. Both. So it was your understanding that the part of the problem was drinking before 2 a.m. Yeah, least. that's why we reinforced the policy. And so it was part, at least, of your understanding that there was a risk that the CID could conduct an undercover spot check and that if employees were seen, seen drinking alcohol on the premises, you could lose your license. Correct. Not when they're on duty, they're finished. So as long as they're not on duty? Yeah, they're not on duty and they finish the thing. This is the way I refer to earlier, Mr. Burns. Not quite for that reason. 
the reason we brought this policy in was because of incidents that had occurred because of the alcohol that was being consumed by employees, not the loss, not directly the loss of license. Do you see the difference? No. Well, in the first situation, the CID come in and they see employees drinking on duty or after hours, and you lose your license because of that. Mm. In the second incident, the second example, the fact that there's alcohol being consumed causes uh, an argument or a fight or some other incident, and it's the incidents that you're concerned about, around the behavior. Uh, my Lord, um, this restaurant operation was under the control of the managing partner and made representation that he understood the industry and understood the operations. From my point of view, I had no doubt in my mind that he was capable of doing that and I trusted him to do that. When the incident came to my attention that such an incident took place, I obviously raised it to him and told him that obviously whatever you're doing is not clear to the employees. Please put a policy in place that's more clear to make sure it's going to be discussed in the future. No more, no less. was because of the incidents that occurred that were related to alcohol consumption. I think my, my attention was brought to this issue by the incident that occurred in the fight. But it was obvious that the policy was not clearly understood and needed to be made clear to all the employees. That's later. No, no, at the same time, when, when we had the discussion, I would never have been aware of this situation if the security had been report the problem Otherwise, I would never have known about it. Mr. Kenny, just so that we're clear, there are two alcohol policies before the end of the year, one in September and one in December. The December policy, it's clear, arose after an incident on the 28th of November. The no, no. September policy, your evidence was yesterday, that that came in because you were concerned that there was alcohol going through the micro system um, Mr. Mostert has raised it with you, alcohol being consumed by employees. Uh, my interpretation is there's only one alcohol policy. The only difference is between September and, uh, and December when I talked about it is the tolerance issue was addressed more aggressively in relating to the clarity of the policy and withdrawing the authority of Mr. Rella to be able to have an exception. Otherwise, the policy remains the same. There was no change of policy. Is a reinforcement policy. I agree that. I'm just clarifying the, the state of affairs. What happened? I already answered that question, Mr. Downs. Now, the other thing that happened in September was that you got the registration of the trademark back, didn't you? That's in part one, same part of the piece two at page 303. Sure, the period of time. Well, look at the document. You applied in September 2011, and you came back on the 10th of September 2012. Yeah, I guess they'd say. And under the federal law, Article 11, the usual period for decision uh, is 30 days. I wouldn't know that. Sorry. Were there any communications with Not the by me. I had nothing to do with the actual registration. You don't know? No. I had nothing to do with it. Well, let's go forward. On the 28th of November, yes. there was a, in your words, there was a fight. Yes. And it was between uh, Andrea Rukavara. Yes? Uh, I believe that he was one of the people involved. Yes. There was a number of people involved. And there were, there were a number of people. And the fight was another 
incident that was connected to alcohol consumption. Correct. Um, and you became more concerned about employees drinking on duty. It was obvious whatever policy we had implemented wasn't working. I see. And so you introduced a more aggressive policy. I met with my partners, expressed my concern, and we all introduced a more stringent policy unanimously. Mr. Downs. And we see that policy in bubble uh, B to uh, page 339. I think, I think the policy is very extended, but I, I don't see where it says that people that people be terminated. No, well, Can you make a reference to that, Mr. Thompson? No, 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 That's no, what you said in your question. Can you please explain to me where that is in the policy? I did say in the question. Um, you said termination. I, I did say that, Mr. It just seems like you're misleading me sometimes, Mr. Downs. Mr. Cadre, just wait until you're asked a question. Thank you, sir. At the moment, I don't think you have been asked one. Okay. When you're asked a question, I'll answer it. Yes, sir. But try to avoid making a speech. That's Mr. Brown's job. Yes, my lord. refer to the documents. Well, yes. well, that's not a question. Um, if he wants you to agree or disagree, he'll okay. ask you to disagree or disagree. At the moment, he's simply making a speech. Don't rise to it. If you want to make, ask him a question, ask him a question. At the moment, what you're doing is simply making advocacy points. If you want to ask a question, put a question to him. Well, read the transcript. It can be useful. be a stricter adherence to the policy. The policy didn't change. Well, it did, because the previous policy did allow some after-duty... I see. That's correct. And you took that out. That's correct, Mr. Young. I stand corrected. Right. Did you know that Mr. Rilla would drink on duty at that point in time? No. Why is that? Why would that be a problem? 
I never saw Mr. Rose drinking on duty. Then why would it be a problem if you did know that? I don't know. Why would it be? Well, would it? I'm sorry, I was just saying to you. Would it have been a problem to you if you learned that after the 6th of December, Mr. Rella would drink on duty? I think if any employee was drinking on duty and breaking the policy, it would be a concern to me. And would it be a particular concern to you if Mr. Rella was drinking on duty? It would be a concern to me if any of the employees were drinking on duty, sir. But would it be more of a concern if it was Mr. Rella? I think it would be more concerning, yes. And that's because, is it, that still you thought you might lose your license? No, because he's the managing partner and he's holding a higher standard. He's not only uh, or, or supposed to be actually abiding policy, he's supposed to be enforcing the policy. And the standard he's held to as the managing partner is a much higher standard than all the other employees. I take that point. Um, well, I'm just answering your question. No, I take that point, but I just want to ask you about the Was it also a concern to you that if he were drinking on duty, that could lead to you losing your license? Any employee drinking on duty and breaking the law could lose my license. I'm concerned about that. I had no particular concern to one employee or even Mr. Ella. I had concern about the entire restaurant. And if you learn that Mr. Ella was drinking on duty, your plans are drinking on duty, what would you do about it? Mr. Ella and I had lots of discussions about drinking on duty. It, it was not only a policy. There was nobody in that restaurant was not aware of the fact that the policy was to be enforced by everybody. And I had assurance by Mr. Rella that it would be enforced. And that's why I gave him the exception last time, because I trusted Mr. Rella in his word that he was capable of enforcing it. I had no reason to suspect at that point in time Mr. Rella wouldn't enforce it. Now, can I ask you the question again? If you learned that Mr. Rella was drinking on duty or planned to drink on duty, what would you do about it? I think it depends on the circumstances. Thank you, Mr. Catherine. Uh, we've already been over the question of hypothetical questions, and that's one of them. And the answer you've given is depend on the circumstances. Yes. But if it could lose, if it, if it would result in a Can we stop asking hypothetical questions and get on with the evidence? What I'm concerned to learn from this witness is what actually happened. I'm not concerned to learn from this witness and what he might have done in other circumstances. Well, I think the question my submission is a perfectly legitimate brain to talk about. I told you not to ask hypothetical questions. I have to in order to do justice to my client's case. I don't see that. What I'm concerned to decide is what actually happened. Your worship is concerned with what happened, but your worship will also be concerned with the state of mind of individuals later on. Um, their motives will fall into play. If you're going to put to him that he had an improper motive, then put it to him and he can answer you. I will leave you forcefully, but I... Well, if you want to put to him that he has an improper motive, do so. I will do, in due course, in a form of... Then get on with it. In a form of... Get on with it. If it's part of your case that this employer is acting in bad faith, then put it to him. There's a line of cross examination that is carefully constructed and depended on the certain fact questions that the law should stop asking so I'll get to the point. Get to the point. But it would be more effective for I doubt it. Get to the point. I've listened to this cross examination for the last day. We do. Page three, six, seven. This was New Year's Eve uh, that was being discussed on the 2nd of December. And there was 
discussion about whether to use the outside terrace. And you were included in the uh, emails copied to you. 368, um, Mr. Moster is asking for comments. And then 367, email copied to you. You might want to look at the email. I'll wait to hear the question of Mr. Downs. Well, yeah. Dear Mr. Dear Mustafa, Andrea, and Luca, it would be good to hear from your side of operation and considering also some special deluxe security form and sorted counterplay that you proposed. If you find the idea of the extra extension worthwhile to be pushed, personally I had already expressed my opinion at the table this was a meeting, and this is what we said at the meeting. I'm not against the fact that I have this extra space used for external clients and will love to join the edge of the game, enjoying a few drinks and streets and streets of higher and further and further clients. That was a meeting amongst the senior uh, management to discuss whether to use the outside terrace, and Mr. Rabbit was making absolutely no secret of the fact that he intended, at that stage, to have a drink. Absolutely. 2nd of December. Absolutely. 10th of December. Yes. At the top. He now sends this email to you. So this is after the zero tolerance policy is reported. Absolutely. Here below my feedback and the thing extra space. Now, if employees drinking on duty raises the prospect of a loss of a license. Did this not concern you? Not at all. Mr. Rolla, besides being an employee, is a partner. And the partner policy, any partner can come to the restaurant anytime he wants. He can bring his family, he can bring his brother, which he did. He came a couple of times with his brother. And he can enjoy a, a wine and look at that Burj Al Khalifa and enjoy the restaurant as much as me because he's a partner like me. All the partners were clearly invited to eat in the restaurant off hours, invite their friends, invite their family, and entertain the restaurant because that's what the restaurant was for. I don't see any problem with that, Mr. Downs. You knew that he would be working that night. How would I know he'd be working that night? Copied on the memo. New Year's Eve, most important, mm -hmm. one of the most important nights of the year. Mr. Downs, I never heard anything so absurd in my life. It went very well on New Year's Eve, didn't it? I'm sorry? I think the New Year's Eve was a good New Year's Eve. You put your arm around him? I'm sorry? You put your arm around him, didn't you? <laughs> I put my arm around all my partners and hugged and kissed them. And you congratulated him? No. And you would have seen him drinking on Tuesday at that event, wouldn't you? No. I was entertaining my family. I wasn't busy checking out who it was doing what on New Year's Eve for two days. Let's move on to January. Um, until then, if I've understood your, correct, your evidence correctly, until the beginning of January, Mr. Rella had an unblemished record. Until? I don't want to say unblemished record. <laughs> None of us have unblemished records. <laughs> Well, first thing, they didn't show up at work most of the time and wasn't around all this. I can't say it's unblemished. Certainly didn't have an issue that I was concerned about, but didn't have an unblemished record. Oh, that's right. Now, Mr. Gundry, there came a point when you learned that he had not been drinking in the restaurant well after 2 a.m. Yes. Do you remember that incident? It I remember the approximate time. I remember the incident in the approximate time. Can you tell us a little bit about how you came to learn that news? Yeah, I had come to work in the morning, uh, not to work, to the restaurant in the morning for a meeting, not with the restaurant people, but an outside party. And I met the DIC security person, and he brought it to my attention. And can you place that, place us all? I can just tell you, it was around the uh, 
second week of second week, third week of, uh, of November. Oh, I'm sorry, of January. Of January. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. Sorry. <laughs> so. You say there's no such thing as not blemish record, and I take your point, Mr. Patrick. But as of the third of January, there was no reason to believe that Mr. Rella wasn't performing his duties perfectly satisfactorily. Also, yeah, he, he he was he continued to have the authority and, and my support to manage the restaurant. And if we look in what will be three, Because this is related to the culinary part of the restaurant. Send an email. No, I don't. The, the, the uh, incident had taken place before that date. Yes, all I'm saying is the first sign in the bundle. In the oh, I'm sorry. Okay, so thank you. I don't think you should rely on this bundle. You should rely on my testimony. When I discovered the tapes and I saw them on tape to be drinking, my relationship and my trust to Mr. Rella turned 180 degrees. Well, it's interesting you say that, Mr. Patrick, because I was going to put this to you. You are, I suggest, a man who is enormously, at times, generous, obviously impressive, very shrewd businessman. But you're not a man to be crossed, are you? Be crossed? Why not? You're not a man to be crossed. Why? If yeah. somebody gets on the wrong side of you, if somebody crosses the line, yeah. you turn, you draw words, 180 degrees. I'm a man that believes in rules and regulations, Mr. Downs, and believes that policies are made to be followed. And I'm a man that the person who I entrusted to operate those policies and to enforce those policies on the second day that he actually met with me as a partner and committed that he would adhere to the policy and regular the policy would be found in the bar drinking from 3 o'clock to 9 o'clock on the same day we had the meeting and he unanimously agreed. Yes, I would be disturbed by that, Mr. If that's your question. You didn't discuss that at this stage. I did when I saw the tapes. You couldn't, did you? You looked at the tapes for the 3rd of January. You found two tapes. One on the 13th and one on the 21st. The I'm saying to you when I saw on the tapes that my partner managing partner was drinking in the bar at the hours he was with some guests 
I can say to you that my relationship and trust in the man certainly changed. Well, my, my suggestion to you is that at this point in January, shortly before I separated and so on, when you learned that Mr. Rella had breached the policy, you turned 180 degrees, and from that point on, you were simply determined to get rid of it. I totally disagree with you. No, I asked the uh, security guard to report. And then you looked at the tapes, nine days worth of tapes from the 30th to the 21st of January. That's right, isn't it? Approximately, yes. Now, each day has eight cameras. Yes. And there are eight hours recorded on each camera. So, yes. potentially, if watched it in real time, there would be 576 hours. Absolutely. Camera. I assume you didn't spend any time. No. How did you go about that? Then? I looked at the beginning, halfway through, and the end. What? Just to make sure that he was there the whole period. Yes. That takes about three minutes. Now, I want to just show you one of the examples. Nobody else in this trial has asked the judge to look at any examples. Okay. I just want to show you a few minutes, and okay. I'll submit you pretty typical of everything else. Okay. So that you have the flavor of what you saw. And this is from the 13th of January, so at this point in time, it's the first case. And I'm, I picked the selection right at the end, so it's 7 a.m. It's the penultimate hour. So one would have thought that this would be where the most uh, interesting from your perspective, evidence would be. That sounds all interesting. Right, well, let, let's just watch <laughs> a minute or so. Um, I'm not sure. Are they going to come on the other screen to announce? Because I can't see the screen. Oh, okay. Thank you very much. If it's of any importance that I should watch it, I should tell you I don't have it on the screen. Yes.
Let's see if we can get you to the. I had to put you to the getting that slide system. Mr. Brown, you, have you been told about this slide? Please, please do. Uh, I was told the night piece, so, uh, so they said that, but I wasn't told precisely what, and obviously it didn't. I mean, if I'm going to be asked to watch, or the witness is going to be asked to watch a video, I want to know whether it's agreed that it is a video of a particular scene at a particular time. Well, I don't know. The person I heard the details in the transcript a few moments ago, and, and I'm just wondering if I agree with that, not necessarily at all, but I'm, I'm sure Mr. Downs can tell me in a moment where it is, what it is, and the source of it. Well, I have something on my screen. It's quite impossible to tell what it is, except that there are some chairs there. <coughs> and what looks like a person in the foreground. Is this what you want the witness to look in? Yes, but will it be running? Nothing's going on the screen. Well, you've, you've got to have a look at it. I don't think you're going to see much from over there. There is one in front of you, I think. It could be turned around. Can you see anything, Mr. Patrick? I can only see, see the first one, but I can't see it very well. Oh, okay. Well, I just want you to get somewhere where well, you can see it. It's coming in the way. Is it possible for that laptop to be turned towards Mr. Patrick? Mm -hmm. Mr. Gadder, I think the best thing is for you to think by just coming around in front of the stand. Where you can see a laptop. I hope that that laptop, I hope that picture is the same as the picture up there. Yes. Mr. Gadder, can I just suggest that what we have there is in foreground two individuals. Well, just a moment. Mr. Cadbury, have you ever seen this picture before? I can't remember, sir. I saw so many tapes. Hmm? Have you ever seen this before? This, this one here? Yes. I don't remember. Yeah. I, I don't know. You don't know if you've ever seen it? No. Because there's also many I can't. I have no idea. Okay. I, 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 I really don't know how many tapes you've been across in this investigation. Well, by looking at the then, then Mr. Downs. Mr. Downs is about to tell you what you can see on it. I don't, I don't think that's going to help. Well, he is about to tell you what you can see on it. There are two individuals in the foreground. Mr. Cabrini, yes? I'm 
If you want to give evidence, Mr. Downs, you can go into the witness box and give evidence. This witness has told you that he's no idea whether it's typical or not. Can I say to you, Mr. Cantry, to your statement? Can we, we can get rid of that video now? Can we? Okay, well, as far as I'm concerned. Thank you. Well, Mr. Cantry, I hope you found that interesting and exciting. Paragraph 51 of your statement. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Which page is it? I'm so sorry, it's bundle A, tax number 4, page 169. Yes. Paragraph 51. Despite what has been confirmed to you by the Director of Security Staff, Mr. Turner, I struggle to believe what I have been told. Yeah. I wanted to see for myself what was going on. Right. So I asked for the Restaurant Security Staff to provide me with access to the Restaurant CCTV recordings. As soon as I looked at the CCTV recording, I saw the defendant was sitting at the bar in the restaurant and appeared to be drinking alcohol during working hours and after hours, well beyond 3 a.m. Yes. I.e. beyond the cut-off time under the alcohol license. Now, you don't say which tapes you view, do you? No. And you don't say which parts of which tapes? No. So it's very difficult for me to show you the tapes that you in fact viewed and asked me questions about them. And not of those. But what I do suggest to you is that what we've just seen on the screen is typical of the tapes that you viewed. Mr. Jones, I can tell you this. On many of the tapes, I saw Mr. Rivera sitting at a bar with another person and a bartender taking bottles and putting it in his glass. And I saw that happen continuously from 3 o'clock to 7 o'clock on several days. It would appear to me that he would be drinking. I don't think that assumption. But that being said, I did go and ask the, the people in the restaurant, Mr. Turner, if this was the case. I didn't make any conclusions until after I had the discussion with the other people in the restaurant. The initial tapes that you asked for were nine days before they met. 13th to the 21st of January inclusive. Where do, I, where do I say I asked for one tape? No, you asked for tapes from those nine days. Yeah. Okay. You accept that? So that's what I wrote. Statement you deal with the tape that you saw 
I saw lots of different things on the on the tapes. And that was typical of what you saw. The fact that Mr. Rello was sitting at the bar and appearing to be drinking, you could say that part was typical. But who was with him or how many people or what times, uh, what bartender was serving him, was the cleaning people there at the same time and he looked like he was telling him to leave. There was lots of different scenes, lots of different people. But what's, what's consistent was that Mr. Rello was at the bar appearing to be drinking. But the people, the times, did differ. Not every tape was the same. Not every day, night was the same. There are three or four emails that I sent regarding the absence. I'm not sure which one really relates to that incident, but I, I did ask the security person. So what it's actually might I witness it? And witness from the three or four emails I sent may, may have been incorrect, Mr. Downs. Well, it's a total invention. Sorry? It's, it's what? It's an invention. You didn't witness this at all. You didn't smell him with alcohol. I went to the I went to the restaurant that evening because at this point in time it was quite obvious there was a problem. I went there with a specific purpose. You you are creating a record that you obviously want to be deployed against Mr. Weller. The gives the impression that you yourself witnessed the events that on your own evidence was that you did not witness. Are you asking me that or telling me that? I'm suggesting that. Well, I can assure you, 
I was a very, very concerned owner of a business who was seeing his managing partner behave in a manner which was totally inconsistent with the position. It was exposing my license. The last thing I had in my mind is some conspiracy, conspiracies here, Mr. Downs. And certainly, my concern at that point in time was protecting the restaurant. Did you or did you not witness, personally, Mr. Reynolds absence from the restaurant from 7.15 to 11 p.m. on the 20th of January? I was in the restaurant that night. Did you yourself witness Mr. Reynolds absence from the restaurant from 7.15 to 11 p.m.? I don't, remember, I don't remember if I witnessed the 7 to 15 uh, p.m., but I remember being in the restaurant at 1 o'clock and seeing Mr. Uh, Roberto. Did you witness that when you returned, that you could smell alcohol on his breath and he was visibly shaking? That's what I saw. That's what you wrote, but is That's it what true? I saw. Is it true? It's true. So why then, when I asked you a few moments ago whether that was an event you witnessed, you said you didn't witness it. It was before the events. Mr. Downs, I used to eat at a beachy restaurant for almost 10 years. And the entire time I was eating at a beachy restaurant and I knew where Verbal, I never saw him have a drink. There was no reason why I should think they think about it. You, for some reason, probably the last, we were gathering evidence, and you created this email that gives an extremely pejorative version of events. Mr. Downs, I was investigating a major fraction that was taking place in my restaurant, to my shock and horror, and could not believe what I saw on the tape to the point that I had to go myself to the restaurant to see it for myself. Anybody in my position would have done the same thing. So you arranged the meeting for the 26th of January, didn't you? Yes. And you had already decided before, decided before you got to that meeting you were going to suspend Mr. Weller. I had already met with the managing partners and I already had the discussion and by that time had had enough information to know that he was drinking based on the evidence I had at the time. No, I was. I actually asked him to give me an explanation. The irony was, he came to the meeting and he acknowledged himself that was him on the tapes. He acknowledged he was drinking on the tapes, and he even told me. And I know the cameras are watching me on the tapes. I was absolutely shocked to hear that he actually acknowledged everything. He did acknowledge it. He did. Yes. But he didn't apologize. Well, when he told me and he acknowledged it, absolutely not. And you already told Mr. Mosler, before two days before the meeting, to draft the resolution to suspend Mr. Weller, hadn't you? I had already prepared myself for the worst case scenario. Yeah. Like any executive would. And let's just have a look at the suspension that can be through on page 426. Before you answer that, you must read them. Sorry? Before oh. you answer that question, you really okay. must read them. Thank you. You're, you're asked whether you believe 1 to 9 is true. So you'd really better read 1 to 9. Thank you, Mr. Question again is: Did you believe all those allegations to be true? At the time I wrote them, I believed them 
to be true. No. Sorry. The business decision would have been to terminate him, but you were giving him the chance to prove that he was able to get better and rehabilitate himself. No, that's not the case. I felt that the information I had was still circumstantial, that there had to be an opportunity to review the information in more detail. Furthermore, at the time when I had these discussions, I had not had a chance for Norman Muster Muston to talk to the bartenders and lots of other people. So at that point in time, I thought the best thing to do was to suspend him with pay until a full investigation could be done and that we could understand the situation. I did not believe that an individual at Mr. Rella's level, who had been in my employment and when I'd known this long, he deserved more than just a quick termination. He deserved me to take the time and the trouble to really understand the situation before I rendered the decision. See, there are three possible agendas, I suggest you at this point. One is to investigate. Yes. One is to rehabilitate. And one is to terminate. Well, you said just that. I don't, I don't agree with number two. And what I'm suggesting to you, Mr. Captain, is that you told him at the time that the agenda was to rehabilitate. Absolutely not. You're telling his lordship now the agenda was to investigate, but truthfully, the agenda was to terminate. The business agenda was to investigate and make the right decision for the company and the right decision for the Virgo. I felt that he did serve to take the time and trouble to make sure that the facts and the things that we assume are right were corrected and collaborated by the facts. And I directed Mr. Muster to do that accordingly. And we suspended them with him. Because until we had collaboration and we knew absolutely what was going on, I did not want to make a final decision. And of course, if you had said, given him the impression, that this was to give him the chance to prove that he was able to get back to rehabilitate himself, you understand that because that's a real problem with your case. Are you making a hypothetical question, Mr. Downs? I don't what is the question? You understand, don't you, Mr. Patrick, that if you said to him that this was to give him the chance to prove that he was able to get better and rehabilitate himself, that is a problem for your case. You understand that, don't you, Mr. Patrick? Mr. Downs, when I met with Roberto Rella, with Mr. Muster in the room, the substance of the discussion related to his actions, our conclusion in terms of the suspension memo and the consequences to the company. At the end of the discussion, I told Roberto, do you know, Roberto, that you have a drinking problem? And he says, yes. I said, Roberto, would you like me to assist you? And he says, well, how do you want me to be assisted? I said, I can help you find a psychiatrist that can help you get better. If you would like, I'd be more than happy to do that. If you have another doctor or somebody else that you want, I'd also be happy to help you support you there. I'm ready to be prepared to help you in any way possible. He says to me, since you have a psychiatrist and you have a doctor and you feel trust in him, then I have no problem to see him. There was no relationship and no discussion on rehabilitation or promise of not terminating or terminating or connecting his ability and inability and desire to seek the psychiatrist Ready to the point of the company. So we'll read you back something you just said. Yes. At the end of the discussion, I told Roberto, yeah. do you know, Roberto, that you have a drinking problem? Yes. Would you like me to assist you? Sorry, I'm just screaming. Let me read again. At the end of the discussion, I told Roberto, do you know, Roberto, that Roberto, you have a drinking problem? He said yes. Yeah. That's what happened, isn't it? Yes. What was it? Um, it's dated the 28th of January. 
I don't know if I, I don't know if I saw it on the 20th of January. But I saw it on the first day. You saw it in the sunset. Yes. And it showed raised levels of bilirubin, which can be associated with alcohol. Yes. Um, what was your reaction to this? You know, well, I didn't have a drinking problem. You didn't regard it as something that you could, was sufficient for you to terminate there and then? No. That's the funny thing, Mr. Downs. Roberto says he had a drinking problem, but he wasn't an alcoholic. He didn't have an addiction to alcohol. Now, I'm not an expert, but if somebody can say they have a problem drinking, but if he doesn't acknowledge he has an addiction and he's an alcoholic, I don't think it's the same thing. And I asked, I asked him, Roberto, specifically, are you an alcoholic? He said no. You didn't realize you had a problem, Roberto. Yes. Well, there's a difference. I can have a problem drinking. You can have a problem drinking. But being an alcoholic is not the same as having a problem drinking. Downs. All right, you draw that distinction. Breach of trust and policy and failure to apologize. Uh, to me, uh, I think it's a very important distinction. I don't want to make a quick conclusion on anything. Sit downs. Certainly, Dr. Shafi's opinion on Roberto was a factor that I would want to consider in the decision. I don't deny that. But it was not the purpose. And it wasn't the factor that would make the decision. I certainly had a genuine desire to see Roberto get better. I took the time not only to find a doctor for him, I personally went with him and his wife to see the doctor. And after the examination, I gave the doctor, the wife, my number. And I said, I understand this is a big challenge. If you need any assistance, please let me know. So I had two relationships with Roberto. And I still do. I had a business relationship with him, which related to our partnership and the company. And I had a personal relationship related to our friendship. It was a very important distinction. For me to be interested in making sure he's getting better. But on the other hand, I did want to know from a professional perspective because that would be another factor that would be important. And then if we can look at page 450, this is an email to Mr. Moss there. Yes. Uh, when we get to page 450, uh, does anybody place any reliance on 445 because it's very difficult to read? Uh, if anybody does place reliance on it, why is it in front of them? If they do place reliance on it, I think the copy is going to be. Three times a week, and my 
I knew he was attending, but I was not involved in the decision, and I certainly did not tell him to. It was his decision. He came in, I, only, I found out he was attending, actually, when he met with me and told me. I didn't know before then. But before his dismissal, he knew that he both acknowledged to you that he had a problem and that he was going to alcoholics anonymous. No. I found out that he was going to alcoholics anonymous. When he met with me, he says, you know, I didn't know they had Alcoholics Anonymous in Dubai, and I went to them, I found a lot of people having the same problem I had, and it wasn't as bad as I expected. That was the first time I knew he went to Alcoholics Anonymous, and that was well after the, the suspension. And then there are some further tests at page 452. Do you think you saw those at the time? It was in February. I don't know. I can't remember. Well, do you remember that the tests, his, his blood tests were coming back more positively? Do you remember that? I was not receiving his test results. I, I received the results from Dr. Shafi on his report, but when they, when they made the test results, Roberto, I think near the end of our, of our discussions, he volunteered some additional test results that were from another hospital, another doctor, which I had never seen before. I don't remember seeing it. Just look at the top of it. It's real time abdominal ultrasonography, sonography reveals. The liver is within normal size of hyperacroic uniform texture and smooth surfaces with no focal defect detected due to fatty liver. Do you see that? I don't even know who well the harm is, and I, know, I, know, I have no idea about what this test does. I, would, I wouldn't know how to interpret the test. You knew, did you? Did you have an ultrasound? It's a down issue. Hang on, you knew that you had an ultrasound, you knew that the fatty liver had been addressed. It's a down I didn't know. You didn't know? I didn't know. I don't even, I don't even know who this doctor is. I, I, I don't remember seeing this document. You're asking me to read 464 to answer? The top of the, the top of 464 is an email to you. Yes. It's dated the 23rd of February, and I'm suggesting to you that you knew that there were tests being done and that they alcohol tests and they were coming back negative, random tests. I only know of one test that was done randomly, which I actually talked to Dr. Shafi about on the phone. And Dr. Shafi told me he had called Roberto office his assistant did to come in at 8 o'clock in the morning and Roberto showed up at 5 30 in the afternoon and when I asked Dr. Sheffy what would that do to the test <coughs> he said that, that they would not be able to take a proper test and understand the alcohol test because he had delayed coming in by over eight hours I am not aware of any other test that took place randomly and I have not been informed by any other test that was done randomly This is a report from Dr. Shafi. You did see this, didn't you? That's the That's report I've seen. Now, he refers at page 462 to the uh, ultrasound. And you see the top paragraph. At the beginning, the patient was put on their clothing. Did you see that? The treatment and recommendations? Yes, absolutely. Now, okay. you read Sent to see a gastroenterologist yeah. who did an abdominal ultrasound and the result showed fatty liver. 
I don't know what that means. Well, it, we've seen the ultrasound. You accept that it's... it's I, 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 I have received this report, but I, I don't have the ability to interpret this report. Why is Dr. Shafi giving evidence? Sorry? Why is Dr. Shafi not giving evidence? He yeah, has the reports. Why is he not giving yeah, evidence? That's Dr. Shafi. Because I can ask him about this. Why is he producing reports? <laughs> I'm not a doctor. I don't know what this report says. I did ask Dr. Shafi what he thought, which is in, is in my evidence. In my opinion, I prefer to have the professional opinion of the person that's doing the service to get the information, not try to interpret the medical reports. I'm not a doctor. But even Dr. Shafi's report, if you look at the end of it, so are other treatment recommendations? You can correct us, Mr. Mike, Mr. Page 462. Yes. Other treatment recommendations? happy to read it. Now, I'm moving away from the medical evidence. Um, I just want to give the shorthand round. I mean, if you, if you want to finish these medical reports, then do that. Roberto, which is much more important than this report, he still said he didn't have a problem. And he still says he doesn't see what problem with having a couple of glasses of wine with my meal. In Italy, that's what we do. And he still didn't find what he did was wrong. And moreover, he still didn't apologize. To me, when I meet with a person who's supposedly gone through all this treatment, and alcohol is anonymous, and all those other things, to have a meeting with that, and to make that position to me, Still made me very concerned about putting anything back in his hands. So he wasn't sad for anything he did in December or January. He was sad because he wasn't sufficiently repentant in your view. That's no. the truth, isn't it? No. He was sad because he broke the policy as a serious uh, breach and 
he no longer had the confidence of the partners to be managing the business. First of all, this email was written not by Roberto. It was written by Naeem. That's number one. So anything written in here cannot be construed that was what Roberto wrote. And to evidence that, Your Honor, can I refer to a document or is this not my lawyer? Well, if we're, if we're about to move away from these doctor's reports, we'll okay. take a break. Um, and then you can... Um, but I would just make a point, my Honor, that this email was not written by Roberto, and there's evidence of that fact, and Roberto acknowledged that. Well, the more important to... issue to me in assessing Roberto was what he said and did during our discussions, which I wrote to, in my email to Dr. Shafi way before this litigation started. And what I believe to be the case is clearly written documented in that memo. So, you well, don't accept. Okay, I, I, I think we'll take, take the break. Um, the email appears to be signed by Mr. Renner, and I don't recall it being put to him that he hadn't written it, but if it was, um, then that can be. So if you want to pursue the point that this witness says he didn't, he didn't write it, you can do that after the break. Um, uh, we'll break until 25 to 12.
Well, Dr. Hassan has to be inter interposed at 12 o'clock, hasn't he? Is that still the position? All the charges. Well, no, we, we must break the 12 o'clock. We just uh, interpose in the 12 o'clock. Oh, yes. Um, and then I
reasonably confident I can give you a thought that this is an important the afternoon. It, it may be that I ask your logic to sit slightly after the but again, with a fair wind, I think I will finish my mind within the three hours of logic. Thank you. Continue. No, I have a copy of the email Mr. Madan sent to him that he forwarded it to me. And if you like, I can show it to you. Sorry? I think you fancy you must look at it. Okay. If you take a look on it. Is it not in the bundle? Yes, it's, it's in bundle. Uh, what's the number? B3. If you take a look at page 5. Two five. Your Honor, at the very bottom, five two five. It is thank you, Naeem. Nice suggestion, so the referral. And if you look at Naeem's email, it's the exact same email that came to me. It's the text the email that sent to Dr. Shafter. Well, we're in because this wasn't put to I'm sorry? This wasn't put to Mr. I'm not a lawyer. I'm just referring to the fact that it was available in the bundle, in the gym, where I sent the doctor's happy, and anybody who read that would have seen it. Let me, I was going back to Dr. Paul 69. Now, the story, did you, did you, did you read them? I did. I okay, thank you. I've seen that, but I don't suggest you that it was his graph, and what did you see later on? It possibly presented to Mr. Wattad in his view. I'm sorry? It I have a problem with this just a moment. Just before you do that, I, I'm trying to understand how these emails work. Uh, right at the bottom of 525, there's a heading from Mr. Mandat to Mr. Brennan. And that, I take it, is the heading of 526. Is that what you're telling me, Mr. Cameron? It's just in the reproduction, Your Honor. It's a continuation. Well, what, what I've got right at the bottom of 525, I've got a heading, an email heading, subject follow up. On the next page, I've got what superficially at least looked like 469. And then I've got Mr. Brella. To um, your Honor, you, I think, sending to you a letter which says, Thank you, now. Um, what, what is it you're asking me to understand? Uh, my Lord, uh, the heading from Roberto uh, to A. Cadre at the top of my email is the beginning of the email that I received. I received this email entirely from Mr. Rowe. From the top on page 425 until 427. That came to me as one email. Sorry, when you say the top of the page. If it, on, on 525, 525, I think. Yes. If you take a look at from Roberto Rella, which on Thursday, March the 7th, yeah. and you look at to me, related to me, yeah. that's the email which I received in entirety of between that 
from 525 through to 527. Yes, I see. Thank you. Uh, you don't know what emails were passing between Mr. Rella and Mr. Nadal, do you? No. Now, just going back to the draft of 469. Apart from that, which, which you can probably go with by way of arguments, the 469. Well, if, if you want to, if, if, if you want to call Mr. Rella to deal with this point, sympathetic to that. If Mr. Brown thinks he ought to put the point to Mr. Rella, he can ask for Mr. Rella to be removed. But, but at the moment, I, no, I now have this witness to that. Just looking at page 469. Yes. Do you accept that the language and the style of the deeds sounds like Mr. Rella's words? Look at the first I definitely believe that some of the content reflects Mr. Rowe. Yes. So he says things like, ensuring better weather and happy path, dot, 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 and then a smiley face at the end. That's Mr. Rowe's style. I really don't know Mr. Rowe, but I, I can't really tell you who or what. But I do believe that there's definitely some elements of this email that reflects the Rowe's style. But at the time, you say that you dismissed it. I said that I couldn't rely on it. And is that a problem to you? Somebody who doesn't speak very good English uh, ask for help from a friend in drafting an email? Absolutely not. And he is in a very vulnerable position at this stage, isn't he? Very vulnerable position. I, I don't understand the question. He's fighting for his life. He's fighting for his life. I will not put it in that terms. And towards the end of March, he revealed that he was hoping and asking to come back to work. I, I do agree that Mr. Rowe wanted his position back. And you've seen medical evidence from Dr. Shafi, from Dr. Hassan. I didn't have the doc I, Dr. Hassan information was provided to me. Partially by Roberto. I never had a meeting or discussion with Dr. Hassan. No, but you've seen medical I've seen some documents that were forwarded to me. I have no idea if, if they're all comprehensive or where they came from, or I have no relationship with Dr. Hassan. I have no way to validate and understand. No, nobody offered me to meet with Dr. Hassan. And you've seen evidence of report, I'm sorry, from Dr. Tahir. I also voted Dr. Tahir. But all of the evidence was that Mr. Vela was doing everything you could possibly expect him to do in this case. The most important evidence to me was my meeting discussion with Robert and what he said and did. That was the most important evidence to me. And he was following at least the doctor's instructions, wasn't he? How much he was following the doctor's instructions, not my doctor's instructions, I really don't know. Don't I, 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 read, I saw the reports, that's all. You don't know when he was following those instructions or not? Because there was a period of time that one doctor was away and another doctor came. You don't know whether he was following instructions or not? No, I don't know if he's following all the instructions. Yes, but you, you wouldn't know whether it was or wasn't. I would not. No. Look at one lane, please. I said I don't know if he's following instructions all the time. You told Mr. Turbo you lied to him. You lied to him. And you said that Mr. Vella is not following Dr. instructions and there was no basis for that statement whatsoever, was there? I did not tell he did not follow instructions all the time. From my understanding, he wasn't doing what he was supposed to be doing. So Mr. Turbo's mistake for that? No, I think that's what he understood. I said. But it's not. 
not what you said. Sorry? It's not what you said. No, I did tell that most of all, that the instructions that I understood the doctor had given you enough on all of Now, I suggest to you, and I've suggested to you once, and rejected it, the truth was no. that at that suspension meeting, the business decision was to terminate the mm -hmm. But you were giving him the chance to prove that he was able to get better and rehabilitate himself. No. I told him that I am happy to see the improvement in commitment to getting better, but the subject is more complicated than that and would require a long time analysis before we can come, come to any conclusion, let alone his return to work. I was forced once again to remind him of the serious nature of the problem and the exposure of problems and cause. I repeated that the business decision at the time would have been simply to terminate him, but I wanted to give him the chance to prove that he was able to get better and rehabilitate himself, not because he had to, but because he wanted to. That is exactly what happened with Mr. Deputy Sir Patrick. Exactly what? That's exactly what happened with that suspension. And that discussion had nothing to do with the suspension. It had to do with the meeting I had with him. This discussion, this email referred to the meeting I had with him. It did not <coughs> excuse me. It did not refer to the suspension meeting. It referred to the meeting I had with Roberto prior to having sent this. This email just came as my concern when Roberto met with me to discuss the situation. This was my observation from the meeting that we had. This was not the meeting we had during the suspension discussion. And he had done everything that you would ask him to do at this point, hadn't he? Yes. And you were going to ask him to do? Yes. No. What haven't he done that you asked him to do? I'm sorry? What have you not done that you asked him to do? Uh, had, had I asked him to do or I expected him to do? What have you not done that you had asked him to do? Uh, first of all, I didn't ask him to do anything that, that he didn't want to do. I, do, I offered him. I offered him support. No. I didn't ask him or tell him to do anything. I I don't know. I wasn't following his presence or whereabouts. He wasn't reporting to me. I had no idea what he was doing. I had two meetings with Mr. Rello between the time we talked to suspension and the time that we made the final conclusion. I have no idea what he was doing. I have no evidence of what he was doing. And what I want to suggest to you is that what we see in this email is that you have already made your mind up you're going to get rid of him. Yeah. And you've moved the goalposts. And what you are saying here is that you want him to be more repentant. Let me show you a few examples. Third paragraph there. Last sentence. Interesting enough, in spite of all the therapy and AA classes, Roberto does not feel sorry or apologetic or guilty or ashamed. He does not believe the problem is so big and has been exaggerated somewhat. Now, I don't accept that, actually, but even if it's true, you are moving the goalposts, aren't you? No. I'm saying he still doesn't acknowledge he has a drinking problem. Yes, he has, Mr. Patrick. He acknowledged it, he told us on the 26th. You told him the problem and he agreed. He didn't acknowledge he had an alcohol problem in terms of being an alcoholic. He, had, he acknowledged he had a drinking problem. And I already mentioned the distinction between the two, Mr. Jones. Yes. And what's your page 523, three lines up? He did not say that he would acknowledge his problem. Which, which, which line? I'm so sorry. Page 523. Yes. Last paragraph. Yes. Three lines up. He did not say that he would acknowledge his problem. Request their assistance. Apologize. 
letting them down, etc. To him, it would be business as usual. Which sees over your email. So moving the goalposts, you're saying he hasn't been sufficiently repentant. Absolutely not. Well, I'm saying that in spite of what he put us all through, and in spite of almost losing their license, and in spite of recognizing what the severity of the, of the um, I'll say, serious cause he went through, he still thinks he can go back to the restaurant and everything's normal. Does that sound like a situation of somebody who's reformed and understands what is required to manage a business and he will put their, the business of 131 people in his hands? And at 524, you're trying to poison the doctor's mind because you know he's going to produce a report. Where are you referring to now? 524, you start saying things about this that are not put to him in cross examination at all. <laughs> when I they asked him if he considered himself an alcoholic, he said no. Exclamation. He does not need alcohol like alcoholics, and evidence how he was managed so well over the last past eight weeks and how he's getting better. He feels it was a matter of alcohol abuse, not being an alcoholic. Then you say this by the way his eyes were swollen and he was shaking the entire time of the meeting and looked very restless that way. This is a bit like what you put in the email, trying to poison the mind of the recipient, isn't it? This is what I observed in the meeting, Mr. Jones. I have no purpose in sending this email to Dr. Safi except to get his comments and observations of my observations of Roberto during the meeting. Nothing more, nothing less. Okay, I'll take a look at the whole thing. Look at the bottom paragraph on that page. Clearly, Roberto is anxious to get back to work and is now experiencing internal stress and anxiety, staying at home. And he's trying to put pressure on me to accept his return. He's also putting pressure on the other two partners. In the meeting today, he tried harder to convince me that he was better and ready. The fact of the matter, he is neither ready nor competent. He is delusional and still having a freaking eye on He's going to Alcoholics Anonymous, Mr. Patrick. Is that being kind? I don't know. I only know what he told me. He, he told me he's not an alcoholic and he doesn't have a dependence. All the medical evidence that you've seen is positive. He's done everything that you could ask him to do. You told him that the business decision was to terminate, because you were going to give him a chance to rehabilitate himself. He's done everything, and you're still not satisfied, are you, Mr. Patrick? No, I'm agreed with you. Stop using Mr. Jones. Look at the bottom. Clearly, Roberto is actually up to us. I'm sorry, I get that. And then, the fact of the matter is that he's not ready to be confident. I'm so sorry, I read that as well. The delusional going through that, he still does not feel apologetic. This is, you want him to be poor again. Not sorry for what he's done, nor does he realize the seriousness of his breach of trust in the institution. I also feel that he has significant pent up aggression and wants revenge against those responsible for scooping on him and showing everybody that he's in charge and the ultimate power behind the bird and then you say it's definitely worked hard on his physical health, but I see no improvement on his mental health. On what medical basis did you make that diagnosis? I didn't make a medical basis, but my own personal opinion. Are you, are you medically qualified? Absolutely not. Okay. But at the end, you see, after saying all this, giving all this material to Dr. Shafi, who we see in one report has produced. But at least one factual matter that is very seriously inaccurate about the fact he did that. You are giving him all this material. At the very end, at this point in time, I'm reviewing my options and await your final assessment and opinion. Yes. You wanted a very negative opinion. No, I wanted to understand what Dr. Shafi believed. If my opinion and my views <coughs> meant anything, or if he read it differently. That's why he was paid to do in terms of trying to get them as advice to Roberto. <coughs> I was sharing the information. The, um, the zero tolerance policy that you brought in in the Senate, uh, Mr. Daz, is, is somebody um, meeting Dr. Hassan outside? Okay. As, soon, as soon as he comes, we, uh, Dr. Hassan here. Well, That's a very Shall we interpose into this statement? Uh, Mr. Kadri, um, 
you haven't had the opportunity, at least this morning, to read the whole of this letter on 5523 to 5525. So while Dr. Hassan is giving evidence, you might care to read the whole of that email. And if you... Okay. Then you will be asked any further questions on the basis that you have read the whole of Okay, you just stand down for a can, I have a, can I have a copy of it? Okay. I believe. Yeah, it's right. Mr. Dines, you can put this letter to Dr. Hassan. Yeah, if you don't know. Uh, no, it wasn't. It's, it's the other doctor. Yes, quite. So, so there's no reason why you shouldn't have a copy of this, Mr. Kaplan, if you want. Yeah, call, call Dr. Hassan. Yeah, if you will. So I call Dr. Hassan. Uh, my name is Yaron uh, Hassan, and uh, I live in Alcos 1 in Dubai. I swear by Almighty to God that the evidence that I'm about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Dr. Hassan, can you be given uh, the document that is in Bumblay in Tap 33? your witness statement to a report in March 2013, and it's at this document at page 482, in Report that the geologist who wrote the report on the ultrasound reported that. Right. I have given a reference of that. So you're just recording what's in the report already? Correct, yes. You say that um, Mr. Grella has been under your care for over three years and followed prescription and the heart has been put above the condition. What were the conditions that he was seeking treatment for with you? Uh, actually, I, uh, I have corrected this in my witness statement from the date I first saw uh, Mr. Allen. Right. Uh, he's basically registered in my practice, like most of my patients who would come to see us regarding their chronic conditions, such as uh, in my practice, it's mostly diabetes, cholesterol, blood pressure. Matters related to internal medicine. So it's a slightly, you can say, a specialized version of a GP practice. So he would come to see me for these conditions, and uh, if he would get a respiratory tract infection or a flu or anything like that. So these would be the main ones that I've been following. So, as you say, it's more like a GP practice, he turns up and tells you what. Problem and you give whatever prescriptions you require. Correct. As, as 
well as if there is anything to follow up from my perspective, which in his case was blood pressure and cholesterol. Yeah. He didn't in relation to alcohol consumption, did he? No, he did not. Do you know that fatty liver is associated with alcohol consumption? Uh, it can be, yes. And did he tell you that he was sending alcoholics anonymous? Uh, not not uh, during these visits that he had, no. No. You see, he seems. I mean, I think I've got the answer to your relationship. It's, it's not necessarily that sort of treating position, because it's more prescribing and seeing if there's any possible follow-up. So that does include prescriptions and treatments. See, we saw two other doctors, I don't think you've seen their report. And I'll just take you to the concluding one from Dr. Shafi. That's at page 519. I don't know how small medical treatment is if you like. Personally, I don't, but uh, Mr. Rana did share with me all the doctors, or most of the doctors he's been attending, that included psychiatrists, yes. Right. If we just look at what he says, and in the first paragraph he recalls the alcohol consumption, which was 2.5 bottles of vodka plus 3 bottles of wine plus beer, and that's a, a week. Actually, in my own notes as well, as part of our history, we do ask everybody if they consume alcohol or not. And Mr. Hannah did uh, mention it in person. Uh, answering your question about relapse, according to this particular statement, it's very difficult for me to give an opinion. Well, I just said, first of all, you disagree so let's go by. Please continue. Sorry, can you repeat the question yeah. then? Do you disagree with the statement that people can relax? No, I don't disagree. Uh, it's a very generalized statement. Yes, it is. Yeah. But it's nonetheless the prognosis he offers. Uh, so what are you asking about? Uh, are you saying it's a wholly unreasonable statement? Uh, Dr. Shafi's statement. In medical practice, uh, actually, all our statements are usually generalized. So it's very difficult to call a statement reasonable or unreasonable. So I don't know how to answer that, to be honest. No, that's, that's fine. Well, I've got no further questions. Mm -hmm. Any anyway, just for a brief moment. Uh, fatty liver. <coughs> um, is there anything else about alcohol use that can be connected with? Yes, it's uh, actually uh, besides the uh, alcohol, it is nowadays what we call is the non alcoholic fatty liver disease, the most common liver condition other than infection in alcohol. So, particularly lifestyle cholesterol. Uh, hypertension and complication both that can be associated with fatty liver disease. And that's what I thought, um, and that's what I'm referring to by the uh, What's the cause? Good question. Uh, so, Tersan, could you just look back at page 482, which is your medical support? Uh, the visit date at the top. It's uh, 5 3 13. And I take it from your witness statement that that's um, a European style date, meaning the 5th of March, rather than 3rd of May. That's right. Uh, yes, that's correct. Uh, 
projetos de concretar. That's correct, yes. Um, that puzzles me a little because uh, when you get to diagnosis, uh, it says has had surgery on 28th July 2013, which seems to be after the date that you saw him. It, is that date, 28th July 2013, correct? have to refer to uh, my notes on this, but I take your point and that does uh, not uh, look similar, yes. But if, if, if this was a note made following the visit on the 5th of March, it doesn't look as if 28 July 2013 could be correct. Correct, yes. Uh, so that, that might be a different day. And when we get to the impression. Uh, you have written under my care for over three years, but as I understand your evidence, that's really two years. That's correct as well, yes. Well, uh, thank you very much for spending the time to come here and give us your evidence. I do appreciate that doctors have more important things to do to come to the evidence. Thank you very much. I'm very comforted about your answer about that in liver because my doctor tells me just the same and doesn't attribute it heavily to alcohol. Thank you very much. I don't know whether it's possible to clear that, clear, clear up the surgery date by agreement, but at the moment it looks to me as if 28th July 2013 is probably not the right date. I mean, it's not, we, we both think it's the surgery of the previous year, which was the subject of medical expenses, as Dr. Rogers. Well, 2000, I think it should be 2012. Right. It's, it's, that, it's that surgery. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's that spinal surgery that we've been talking about. It must be 
the supervisors and staff should be held liable to the full extent should there be a breach of the policy. You see that? Yes. Yes. Now, technically, I'm not in any way criticising what you're doing to the country, but just technically, there was nothing new in the was there? I mean, this was always the position since the 6th of December. This is the first time I'm giving the instructions directly to the Lounge Manager. Well, I had no evidence before from anybody that he had been formally informed of the policy. So I felt it important to make sure that the person who was responsible for the Lounge understood the policy because at this point in time the policy wasn't being followed. So the big difference was that it was addressed directly to the Lounge Manager who was accountable for the Lounge and the Bar. And there was, from this point on, an investigation that was going to be undertaken into the issue. Yes, I have Mr. Mustard to investigate. Yes. And so you will have been concerned, not just with Mr. Rella, but also with any other violations of policy that came to light in that investigation. Any, I would say to you, not all violations, but any serious violations. Well, you will be concerned at least to consider them, wouldn't you? Sorry? You will be concerned at least to consider them, wouldn't you? I don't, I don't understand the question. Well, I suggest you as a reasonable employer, your investigation, it, it, it lies. Uh, if in the investigation it came to light that other employees had been breaching the policy, you'd need to consider that, wouldn't you, at least? Huh. No. I think any major breach, uh, I would have to look at, but. I asked the investigation to be done by a responsible person, actually two people, and relied on their ability to do the investigation. Yes, and as a reason employee, you want to make sure that there was fair treatment across the employees, wouldn't you? I want to make sure the investigation was correct. I mean, you wouldn't want to, for example, make a special example of Mr. Weller and then just let other people off and put it in the public, would it? I don't think any employee should be treated any better or any worse than anybody else. Yes. So, um, there have been a series of violations of the alcohol policy, haven't there? Um, let's look at the one for Big Spring. Page Warnings were given as a result of the investigation, Mr. Downs. I think you must understand it. These warnings came as a result of the people who were associated with Roberto's problem. And at the end of the investigation, these warnings were given to all the people involved in the investigation because that's when we became aware of them. They were serious enough, and they all gave them warnings, and they all came up with the investigation of Roberto. And unfortunately, they all paid the price of being doing what their boss told them to do. But regardless, they broke the policy. And even though Roberto Ross told them to do it, they're accountable. And that's why they got the warnings. Because Roberto Ross has done both the policy of the law. And they didn't know that. 447.3, Mr. G. He got the warning as well. He is also involved with Roberto, serving Roberto. And so there they did, 473 spot one. Yes, 
He was also responsible for serving Roberto. Senior manager, isn't he? Right. Now, this is more troubling, isn't it? Because he's given this final warning letter, and he doesn't accept any of it. Well, if he accepts it, doesn't accept it, it's a different issue. Well, he's not repentant at all. Well, his explanation is, if the managing partner tells me to do something, I feel I'm only following instructions. And unfortunately, the comment that Mr. Luca wrote is the same comment that Mustafa would tell you and Andrea would tell you, that they did drink and they did do things wrong, but they did it under the knowledge and support and, and incentive of Mr. Rilla. So, so a lot of the employees inside the restaurant did what Roberto told them to do against the policy because they're afraid of action by Mr. Roberto. Roberto. They breached the policy because they thought that Mr. Roberto was above the policy and that they should support what he said. Sorry. He continued. You mean he continued to be employed? He continued. This is the 10th of March. This is after. This is when he was served. He was on vacation at the time. When he came back, he was served the warning of the same people. All these people, these warnings, my lord, were people that were directly associated with serving Roberto at the lounge. And from the top person to the bottom person, they were all given warnings. Mr. Mr. Luca objected the warnings because his explanation was, I did what the boss told me to do. So how can you blame me? That was his perception. Our point was, you have to follow the policy regardless of the policy the boss telling you to do or not. Unfortunately, so many people in the restaurant believed if it was good enough for the world and he required it and asked for it, they had to follow his instructions because he was the managing partner. Company policy, yes. Yes. And six oh six spot three. Mr. Sinita. Some of the Mr. Dagnardi at least is very senior, wasn't he? Who? Mr. Dagnardi, he was very senior. He was a long man, yes. And did you not think he ought to be suspended? At least in the proper investigation monitor? Not under the circumstances. Page number? Paragraph 60. Yeah. Page 171. Yes. So the investigation was completed in early February. Yes. But why not dismiss it now? Oh, I, I, I was away for business trip from the middle of February to almost the middle of March. Even though the investigation was finished, for some reason, statements were continuing to be taken. Which statements? Well, one of the three on page 465. Yeah, because he was away. He was away. I mentioned that. That's why his, his warning came later. Not until I got back. Um, Not until I got back. When you got back? Yes. Not all the material. He gave me a report. Well, let's see if I can find it. Page 
Told me he checked the logbook. He told me he checked all the videos, CTC. He told me he did his job and he concluded what he found. As, a, as the chairman of the company, it's not my job to go look at every single document that he looked at. I don't have time for that. He, he's the chief of financial officer of the company. If he did the investigation with, on behalf of the company and made representation, there's no reason why I shouldn't believe it. I certainly should be double checking what he did. He said that he reviewed the evidence with me, the findings. No, he says he reviewed that you all of the evidence that I gathered. That includes the biological. Which is now in the file. Yes. And then he says, well, I don't have the biological. Yes. Yes. I've repeated several times, I never saw or read the log book. I don't know if I can be more clear than that. Let's go back to the one that we looked at the brief for yesterday. Let's just go back to the file in B2 and page 343. Action. I, what do you mean by any action? Any disciplinary action. I'm not sure I would know. You, you didn't know that? I said I'm not sure I would know. Well, every, every warning that takes place in the, in the company is not something that I, I'm involved with. The end of March, you are looking to dismiss Mr. Weller. Yes. And I suggest as a reasonable employer, you would want to consider all the circumstances before taking such a drastic step. Do you agree with me? Yes. And part of the circumstances include other members of staff that may have been involved. I want to understand all the facts as they were presented by the investigation. I wouldn't want yes. to give the impression that you were treating Mr. Reller either less or more favorably than he deserved compared to other staff. I don't understand the question. What's the question? You would want to know what disciplinary action should be taken. And I suggest you decide what disciplinary action should be taken. And then tell the staff as part of your decision making process as to whether to dismiss Mr. Reynolds. The items that are brought to my attention, which were the individuals involved. Not only were they given disciplinary action, I signed the memos myself. That's what was brought to my attention in the investigation. That's what I responded and acted to. I, I suggest you consistent with Mr. Ross's evidence that you did see this one, didn't you? Absolutely not. Do we have a? Do we have the original copy of this document? Uh, we've asked for it more this morning. Oh, yes. yes. But if, if, if the witness is going to be asked whether he saw the long book, it, it, it may be more sensible for him actually to see the document as it was 
rather than a serious effect of public care. Thank you. And this looks at, to me at the moment rather like a rule. No, is that what you do? No, okay. Can I just show you the first page of what you'll see, which starts on the second page? Which is the first copy page. This is what this is. This is all the being copied, as it is. You don't pass that to Mr. Downs, I think, before it gets to the Well, I think there are more of them. We haven't got them all together, but there are more of them. Because the, although there's a slight disagreement. Well, this is the one that's being produced. So if you want to put that one to the witness, you have the opportunity to do so. I think what you'll be asked is whether you've ever seen this document. I've never seen this log book before, my honor. First time. Never seen this log book? Never saw it. Did you read the statements that were introduced? Which statements? The statements that Mr. Mostek had obtained from the other members of SAR. No. You didn't look at their statements? Their statements? Yes. You're talking about the people that we gave the warnings to? What statements? I'll show you one. Can, can I get this back? I want to keep it. Um, we'll keep it on the side. Let's see. Are you referring to the statements of the people that were interviewed, that were at the lounge at the bar? The people that were interviewed as part of this yeah. investigation. The people who I gave the warnings to, I had read their statements. If that's what you're referring to. I was told of the existence of the logbook, but I didn't have to see it. You knew of the existence of the logbook? They told me. In the investigation, it was a logbook. Yes. But you didn't want to see it? No. So, when was the first time that you saw the contents of the logbook? The contents? When was the first time that you saw the contents of the logbook? When you brought it to my attention. But yesterday? In terms of the content of the logbook itself, yes. Anybody who was drinking with the Roberto was breaking the policy. Yes. What's your reaction? Do you think Our reaction is that they did what they thought they could do because Roberto let them believe they could get away with it. So it's all In other words, when the boss was there and, and drank with them and encouraged them, they thought that was perfectly fine. That was the consistent of the behavior and the culture that Roberto had developed, obviously. How do you know that he was drinking because Roberto. His name is there. Well, that would be the conclusion. I can't do it. Was he interviewed? No, I'm not telling you. You asked me to look at the logbook, and you told me what's going on. My observation is that, and that would be my explanation of why I think they're doing it. So then, 346, there's Chef Lieber again. Page 347, Chef 
Any employee who breaks the policy, regardless of who they are, is serious as far as I'm concerned. I don't differentiate outside of it. one employee or another employee. If someone breaks the policy, they break the policy. How serious it is depends on the circumstances. The more senior, the more serious, surely. Well, definitely a manager would have to be take more accountability than an ordinary employee. A managing partner would have to take more. But I agree with you in principle. The more senior, the more serious. But Andrea Rivero was very senior in this organization. He was part of the core management team. Correct. And he set the standards in the kitchen. Didn't he? I don't know. Andrew is supposed to follow. Yes. So what's your reaction if, if this is Mr. Rivero? If you broke the policy, or if you broke the policy. Well, should you be disciplined? Anybody breaks the policy should be disciplined. I don't understand for that. And let's look further in. Page 352. Now look at these entries, because here what we've got is, it starts at 226 a.m. with Andrea and Luca. Yeah. So Luca there is not being encouraged by Andrea. Well, Roberto's there as well, to be fair. But then after that, 2.45 a.m., we have Andrea Luca. Roberto may still be there in Venice. I have to assume that the arrow means that Chef Andrea was drinking with the burgle. I have to assume that looking at this, this face value of this paper, Roberto invited the boys for, you know, how he refers to, and this, I invite the boys for drinks at Vichy. Obviously, now Roberto is inviting the boys for a drink at Roberto. This culture is obviously something that was established at Vichy and continues in terms of how Roberto treats his boys. You say, I'll, I'll accept that, but it's, that's not an unfair inference that Roberto okay. there as well. Thank you. Um, but Mr. Mugavaro is involved, he is very senior, and he is drinking until well after 2 a.m., isn't he? According to this information, yes. And he does set the standard in the kitchen, doesn't he? He's the senior manager in the kitchen. And if you look at page 353, three, there is at least one example. In fact, it looks at 354 as well, where he drinks. And he's the one encouraging this little thing. What's the date on this? January the 1st of 353. That's New Year's Day. Does that, does that make really? I don't think it does, but <laughs> so I'm seeing this for the first time. Well, I don't, I don't accept that. You don't accept what? I don't accept your seeing this for the first time. No. That's up to you, Mr. Dunn. If you want to call me a liar, that's up to you. I suggest you're all giving untruthful evidence about that. Well, Mr. Tadry, he has done so several times, so it's not very new. But the question is whether he can persuade me that you're telling lies. Uh, and your evidence is that you haven't seen this, and therefore uh, to ask you questions on the basis that you have is unlikely to be very productive. Uh, well, you, your Honor, the, the monitor is not working. Can you just sort of. Okay. Well, I, 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 I take And if the witness says he hasn't seen these documents, no, we're not going to get very far with well, questions on the basis that he has. I challenge it and I'll deal with this So I accept that. You, you told me and him that he's not telling the truth and I tried to decide that. Well, I, I accept that. Thank you. And the truth is, Mr. Patrick, that you drank at the restaurant after 2 a.m., didn't you? I drank after 2 a.m.? Yes. On New Year's Day, maybe. So you drank after licensing hours on New Year's Day? 
No, the hours were extended for neighbors. I suggest to you that based on what Mr. Castro, Castro told you, what yeah. he did, you were in court and heard his evidence. Well, if you take whatever the DJ said to be truthful, then that's up to you. Mr. Barber was disciplined several times for me and was terminated by the company. And I certainly can tell you that whatever he said doesn't make any sense. Didn't get dates, didn't get times. Maybe you might wonder what his motivation was for all of a sudden coming forward and getting such a He's a DJ, he wasn't a bartender. I didn't think a bartender or any lounge manager or anybody else would make a restaurant to respond to get evidence against him. I didn't hear what Brother Rowe could get evidence against him. I'm suggesting it. Yes, that's my opinion. I'm just having my opinion on it. Not. Now look at the the letter that was sent terminating Mr. Reynolds' employment to Bumblebee Three Climate Group. I don't know what the employee law and articles is. I'm not a lawyer. I'm sorry? to do, it didn't have to do with the result of termination, it came as a result of what I was told by my CFO and by the lawyers was required. I'm not the lawyer, and I'm not the one that was able to understand the law. And it contains six allegations. I don't call them allegations. because he's an alcoholic. No. And you have a draft of it, Mr. Moster. He's done with some care because if you look at paragraph six, he's obviously gone down the employment contract yes. and looked for the clauses that are going to be reliable. Do you see that? Yes. And he's only identified one, eight. Not in this letter. No. They were discussed. Eight H. Mr. Cadre. Is an allegation that's not being relied upon in this case. It's not been put to Mr. Rella. Um, let me read it to you. Um, executive use of alcohol or drugs which materially interferes with the performance of his duties. You have no evidence to suggest that any alcohol that Mr. Arella had consumed interfered with his duties. Mr. Downs, on, on numerous occasions which I noted, after drinking, he didn't come into the office. 
not once, not twice, on many occasions. And I observed him departing from the restaurant and going and coming back having drunk. If they don't evidence that fact, I don't know what does. Sorry, you did observe him departing from the restaurant. I thought earlier you said you didn't observe him departing, you observed him coming back. Okay, coming back to party. I was there that evening. What is it? The first time you said you didn't represent it, you just told it might be bad. The second time you said you saw him coming back, but not going. And now you're saying you saw him going and coming back. Which is it? I told you I was there this, the evening, and I spoke to him at the late in the evening. If I actually remember exactly when he left, it's been a long time. Which of those three is it? It's, it's a long time, I don't remember. You don't know? No, I don't remember exactly. This was quite some time ago. That's the longest answer. Did you consider the term of the suspension when you decided to set up? Did you look at the suspension letter? Did I look at the suspension letter? Do you want me to look at it now? Well, I'm going to guess it's on page 426. I think prior to writing this letter, I looked at all the evidence, including the suspension letter. You did look at all the evidence. I did. Uh, all the evidence that I'm referring to is relevant to my decision. Yes, you did look at all the evidence. I said I thought I looked at all the evidence that's relevant to my decision. Um, so the suspension of 426 has nine grounds. Yes. And then the, the termination of 583 has six rounds. And let me tell you what's changed. Number one, the suspension letter has gone. That's not there. A breach of trust in your position of management partner. Um, two, uh, engaging in unlawful activities by drinking the company's premises. That's there. Um, and that's exactly the same wording, so it looks as though the draft has been deliberately copied and then amended. It has been a deliberate, somebody's applied their mind to whether the grounds of the suspension can be justified in termination. Did you apply your mind to that? I don't know why those clauses were added or not added in the suspension. There's a determination letter of Mr. Jones. This is very important, Mr. Well, I'm not a lawyer, and I don't know what the details were. I can't explain that part. I didn't. Understand why they were not included or not. You signed this letter. I did. And it's terminating your partner's That's right. employment. And you knew full well that it would, at least from your understanding, mean that he forfeited his shares. No, it meant he was terminated from the company. Yes, and it also meant, under the shareholders' agreement, the time when we did, we, at the time we issued this, we terminated from the company, Mr. Dummins. No, I know, but you had an understanding of shareholders' agreement. There may, be, there may have been a clause for that, but he was terminated from the company for serious cause. That's what I know. Yes, but you understood that when this letter was signed, at least from Mr. Weller's perspective, it would have very grave consequences. A gentleman being terminated from a job has had, would give greater uh, circumstances for sure. Yes. But you didn't apply your mind to whether the grounds were listed there has been accurately and comprehensively No, the ones listed, I, I'm not sure correct. I, I said to you, I didn't go back to the suspension letter to see which clauses were included or not included. But I, I believe the grounds that were listed, they were absolutely correct. Some of those days absent were legitimate. They were not all illegitimate. I want to show you a document. Who goes to bundle B3? Page 486. Now, this is um, the first email. 
Prince of Mossberg, to Mr. Weber. And it says, subject, Roberto's off days. Now, you sent some emails in January. And on the basis of that, this email was sent. Dear Roberto, the following five days have been deducted from your salary for being absent. Five days. And the investigation is over. Okay. And there they're listed. We've also checked and done even adjusted your normal public holiday days and days off already with other days that you were not in the restaurant before you turned the Rosso. We would adjust the five days against your leave balance once we receive the completed leave form. If you don't have a leave form, I can send you So that's the position on the 10th of March. It was the month of January. Pardon? This was the position for the month of January that we took. This is the position on the 10th of March of 1827. Yeah. So, this is all we know about in this case. That's what Mr. Reynolds dealt with. In terms of his deduction, yes. So he responds, if you go to the previous page, it's 485 at the bottom. Mm. Big story? 485 at the very bottom. No. He responds, it looks like 20 minutes later. So he's right onto this. Hi, did you kindly double check for me and update us? The response I said, yeah. He's challenging. They disagree. Sure. And then the email he gets back the next day at 10.21 is just a bugger. Dear Mr. Berger, please find all attached files and explanation about those particular dates mentioned. These are all taken in sent file folder as the status update for each of the rosters. 8th of January, this was filed in public holiday day. See attached. So he's entitled to that. That was the day of the Lumen public holiday. In the restaurant business, it doesn't necessarily mean that when you take the day off on a public holiday, it's a public holiday. He, he filed it as a public holiday. Sorry? He, he, he took it as a day off. No, he's just mentioning it. No, there's a roster when he's supposed to be attending. There's no evidence here that he was. He took a day off that he was not supposed to be there. Unless you have something else to show me besides this note. Well, let's see how it pans out. And then 11th of January, see attached, updated roster. So she's updated Rosa. It no. shows that you were in the January 11th and 12th. Yeah, the lot of the evidence, obviously, is that Roberto's necessarily saying he's in the restaurant doesn't actually happen. 20th of January, see attached to Mr. Roberto, January 20th. It shows that January 18th was filed as one day annual leave. January 19th, taken day off. January 20th, in or on duty. See Attached on site that there was an updated mention in the same, though the roster was not updated physically. January 22nd, no changes. Now, what he then does at page 484. 404? 484, not on. He sends this to Mr. Mostert. And he says, Hi, Justin, please look. Please look, it can be of any help for clarification. Kindly let me know how we just readjust the calculation. So he's saying, I've checked. The HR department who told me this. Can you have a look at it again? Okay. But he doesn't get a response. We were away at this time. I wasn't copying on interest. No, we were away at this time. I don't know. I don't remember. I thought you said you were away from mid February to mid March. I'm not exactly sure. It's the 13th of March. 13th of March, he chases. Hi, Justin. You're below the text. Just as a small reminder, thanks. So that's that's him chasing up on the 13th. And then at 483, 17th of March, we send all the attachments. Dear Justin, good day. Sorry if I'm almost obligated to read forward uh, you my below email. Not because I need to know about my five days calculation which ones have not real rushed behind me, but mostly for two other points. And he's there saying about how he um, talked about shareholders agreement and the like, and people wanting to back in the restaurant. He says at the end, time for redemption, don't you worry about that. He didn't get a response to this, did he? I wouldn't know. I wasn't copied on the members, Mr. Downs. You knew about it, Mr. Downs. I'm sitting and reading these things that I don't remember. I certainly wasn't copied on these memos. I'll tell you something else as well. You knew, your organization knew at least, all along, that he was in on these days, some of the days. Look at 487. Twelve. See up 
updated operation rosters for January 6th and so on. Changes are as follows. Mr. Roberto, January 8th, public holiday, nearly four months sent. This is on the 12th of January. Yeah. 2012, you became aware that Mr. Rella was in a great deal of trouble because of his uh, neck condition, didn't you? Yes. Uh, and it was becoming pretty much unbearable for him. Let me show you when I say that. This is one of the big two. I don't disagree. You, you don't disagree. Stay home, especially before the operation, because 
of the criticalness of this condition. And I didn't want him to take any chance that he was going to make any work before the operation. Yes. So my concern at that time was the concern for Berkeley himself and my friend. I'm not challenging that. No. I'm not challenging it. As a power case, is that you were supportive and generous. Yes. And I'm not seeking to diminish that. I'm also suggesting to you, though, apart from that, and I'm not seeking to, to downplay that or diminish that, but apart from that, you were also concerned on business. Which period are you talking about, Mr. Jones? Uh, well, the specific email. Maybe I can understand better your question then. The specific email I was going to give you will be to 270, which is July the 7th. Yeah. It's in B2 or B2 or something. The 270. Suggesting that in July, in early July, the latest, you were concerned for him personally, I accept that, but also, extensively and reasonably, you were concerned for business. I was concerned about his recovery and how long it would take. But you were also concerned for business. I, you want me to read a specific area of the numbers? You don't, you don't need to, but if you wish to, Sorry? you can do. Well, I, I think you're referring to something. I'm just trying to understand what you're referring to. Well, the email simply details the pain that you've been and you've accepted that you knew about that. I, I don't even know about it. I, I actually understood it better than Roberto did. If it was up to Roberto, he wouldn't have had the operation and he may be left paralyzed by now. Yeah. None of that I disagree with. I'm simply putting Well, I'm just making the point. I'm not taking dispute with that. I knew very well that he had a very serious condition. The point I'm putting to you is, in addition to your Personal concern, you were also. Well, if you're asking me if I have interest in knowing if after the operation, how long it would take the recovery period for a verbal, that was def definitely part of my interest. Of course. Of course. You see that in emails. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I've tried to understand the advice. <laughs> and so, apart from the person, you're concerned about your investment? No, I was concerned for Mr. Roberto. And look at page 286. 280. Okay. Yeah. Um, and if you look at it's an email at the bottom from Mr. Rogers to yeah. uh, Roberto, it's copied into you. Yes. So it's forwarded to your bar. Yes. And there's a discussion there about some worsening. Uh, numbness and tingling. Yes. And you say in the email at the top, eight of August, um, last paragraph, to the doctor, also you mentioned that you're going to call in a favour to the medical company, which has a software program that stimulates the nerves and can speed up the birth rate yeah. recovery. And yes. What you, you accepted that, though. You, yes. You were interested in getting back to work. I was interested in getting better. Interested to get it back to work, Mr. Patrick Shaw. Sir? You interested, you wanted to get it back to work. My full interest at this time was for a ripper runner to recover and to be out there again. That was my primary importance. I never related that in, to my supposed investment. And you agreed, because there was a question mark over his shoulders, that you would bear the surgeon's cost if necessary. What I told Roberto, and what he knows, we knew his financial condition, that we as a company would financially support him by loaning him the money and dealing with the situation, and after he recovers, I'm sure we'll have the ability to pay it back. And he knew that. And I also told him that, in terms of that number, that it wasn't cut, whatever it takes. Of this business arrangement yes. from the very outset, yes. and an understanding that he would have medical insurance. Yes. Because, of course, somebody of his um, means yes. and background uh, would not be able to fund their own medical yes. bills. Yes. So he had an expectation.
protection. But if he had a serious problem, he wouldn't have to find tens of thousands of dollars in order to get himself right, didn't he? Uh, the problem all the partners and all the employees have the expectation to have medical insurance. And it's very important to them. To the point that despite the fact that we had other alternative insurance policies that were offered to us which were cheaper, we went ahead and the, with the policy that Roberto wanted. He, he brought the policy, he brought the company, and we paid the premium, a higher premium, because we wanted to make sure he was happy and satisfied. Not just him, all the partners. So the choice of insurance and the choice of the insurance company came from Roberto, and I approved paying the premium as he wanted. There's no way that he could have ever afforded to pay $27,000. Who, who knew that at the time, Mr. Downs? Who knew what this thing, I didn't even know what the problem at the time. This problem didn't surface to well over the time that he was employed on. I never knew about this back problem prior to the time that he came to me. I didn't know he had a problem there. You negotiated the rate of 27 well, I didn't negotiate it. My, my management negotiated it. He had no involvement in that. He had involvement in choosing the company and the policy telling us what he wanted. No, but this is the sum of money that's supposed to be he's got ultimately going to have to find. The policy we gave him was the policy he wanted. We didn't argue it. No, I think we're at cross purposes. The $27,000 yes. on your case was the sum of money he was going to have to find at the end. If there was a cost associated with his recovery that wasn't covered by the insurance, we didn't know at the time what the amount was. He would eventually have to pay. Yes. He knew that. It's very old that he also consulted about the price. He was. You talking about of the of the of the surgery? You got instructions from him. We shared it. The, the email was sent to Roberto. It wasn't sent to me. So you don't agree that you. For the costs of the surgery, I, paid the cost. I, I paid the twenty-seven thousand because he wanted the money paid in twenty-four hours by credit card, and the only credit card that we had that could actually cover it in twenty-four hours was my my platinum gold card had that had, had, had that limit because the surgeon on the twenty-fifth said that he's not going to do operation on the twenty-sixth unless he has the money in the account. So I did what I thought was the most human thing to do because I could not see Roberto suffering every day. Every day, every day he was suffering. And he told me, please get it done. So I did what I had to do. I gave him my card and sent the money. I didn't say who was paid, who was paid. I did what had to be done. Because at the end of the day, Roberto knew that we were doing what we did with it later when he had the ability to pay back. It was, it was not an issue of whose credit card it was. It was getting the job done so the surgeon would do the surgery and take care of him. The question. Well, the impression I just got from that answer is that there was this problem that the surgery had to be done. Yes. The insurance wasn't covered yet. Nobody really discussed who ultimately was going to be responsible. I bet you did have a solution in the form of your credit card. First of all, it was discussed. We knew that Roberto had limited means from the very beginning of the discussion. We knew that the company would have to lend him the money. This, this, that part, what we didn't know was how much it was going to cost, and that the doctor would be demanding such a ridiculous. You know, even at the hospital when they rejected the insurance that didn't have it, I had to go to my office in, in the evening, and that's when the check would be pulled on. If you ask me how many checks I sent to Roberto, it was two percent of the checks. I would be giving you an exaggeration number. I did it because the only way we could get that surgery done was to get that check. Because the hospital also refused to do the surgery unless they were paying in the best. So they went, they brought me the check, I signed it, and I took it personally at 8 o'clock at night, and Roberto remembers, and I gave it to him so he could be admitted for the surgery the next day. Otherwise, this thing would never happen. The last thing in my mind at the time, Mr. Downs, was to get Roberto to sign me a document saying it's going to pay back to the company because I wanted that sort of accounting. His work and his commitment to me was more than enough. The only thing I worried about was for Roberto to help to get back to the surgery. Sorry. 
He never agreed to the supervisor. He did. That was there was testimony. He was there. What about Ms. Gironi? What about her? You heard her testimony today. She says that she's remembered. You know, let me let me set the scene for you, Mr. Downs. Birthday party. She has 27 people. If you take a look at the bill, there was more than 10 to 12 bottles of champagne your honor consumed. How this woman can remember a conversation? I drove her home with another with another friend. I don't want to make any character uh, actor here I'll say, uh, accusations, but all I have to say is she had a very good party and has consumed a lot of alcohol. And how she can remember this conversation and how she can understand all that is beyond my imagination. And furthermore, I didn't hear her say that she was aware of any business decision or contact made between the company, Roberto Me, and Dr. Roger or the hospital. I don't understand what she thinks she had I said. She had not aware of what was actually being between Roberto and I, or between the hospital, or behind Dr. Roger. And she never bothered to ask. Interesting enough, she never bothered to ask him to that. But she came back to sleep right with him the day of her birthday after consuming her Muhammad Dr. The terminology. Maybe is there? Is there? Can you explain the semantics? Oh, for sure. That risk was there. I understood that risk. I'm a businessman. And it was a gift. Sorry. It was a gift. What was the gift? The twenty-seven thousand. No, it wasn't a gift.
Uh, oh, sorry, to his gun work. That's come to his gun work. And there was some paperwork no. with the insurance company because the money had gone from the person. Yes. It was being claimed back by Skullmore. The money you paid, yes. It got me on the ledger. Yes. Never seen credits. Same as other things. And then page 319 is the paperwork. 319. Mr. Rell had to sign this for the insurance company. This was his understanding. 319. 319. I hereby inform you that the cost of all my medical expenses, stroke surgery, was fully borne by my company. Okay. I have no objection to my claim reimbursement check being drawn in favour of Skullmore Consulting Group. That's because that's the truth. The truth was that the cost, all of these costs, were going to be, in his view, from his understanding, because of what he'd been told, no. fully bought by the company. What he's doing is just writing a claim letter to the insurance to get the reclaim. And the reclaim, the policy was in the company's name, not his name. And who drafted that letter for him? I have no idea. Which ones are you referring to, Mr. Donald? Because I saw some medical reports from Dr. Shafi, and I saw some medical reports from other doctors. So, which reports are you referring to? Okay. We're now launching onto another topic. No, just clearing up that there was some uncertainty about the uh, which medical reports were referring to. Okay. Um, so, I was just going to clear that up quickly. B3 on page 4, segment 4. So this is an email to you in closing. Yeah. You see Dr. Tahir's report. Where is it? And Tahir's report is the one that is on page 476. So, so our, our thesis items are, are listed behind you, the attachments being referred to in this email? Uh, well, I'm assuming so. Do you believe I don't know. I'm just asking a question. I don't remember. You don't remember. But you will accept that if it is the attachment to the email. Sorry? You, you will accept that if it is the email for the attachment to the email at 474, you will accept that you saw it. I don't remember seeing it. That's my answer. Now, is there any reason why, if it's the attachment to the email at 474, that you wouldn't have opened the attachment? No, I would open it. I would open the attachment. You would? Yeah, and I, I just don't remember. And 481. I probably received it. Look at the page. Some of the, the letters. Is that the attachment? Yes. They are audited. You don't have a copy. 
We sent you the draft audit, and we requested Roberto to attend the meeting, so we could sign it, Your Honor. But he decided, because there wasn't enough notice, he didn't want to come, and he didn't want to sign. So we tried to produce a signed copy. It wasn't possible, so we sent you the draft copies. And you received all the draft copies. And if Roberto attended the meeting, we would have presented the signed copy, Your Honor. He doesn't, he doesn't know. You had a draft version, you said it's the same as he was the one that I've never in those accounts, it shows that your loan yes. has now been fully repaid. Correct. So we have a company now that is, to all intents and purposes, debt free. It's not debt free. There are other debts besides loans. As far as you're concerned, anyway, there's no debt in the company. You talk about my shareholding loan? No, your loan. Not yeah, my, my, my loan. Yes. Yeah. yeah, my loan's been repaid, but there's other debts in the company. And it's generating around about 7 million euros of profit a year. Correct. Would you accept that that company has very substantial value, well over and above the value of its nominal share capital? I wouldn't speculate. You won't accept that it's worth substantially more than 7 million euros? It could be lost 10 million pounds for the last year. Yes. Yes. Did you the cost of what? The operation. That I would contribute? Absolutely not. I was clarifying the charges. Yeah. And although you were paying with your credit card, yes. what can we see from that? So this is in your view of the end payment. Who would be paying in the end? Yeah. For referral. And you see Mr. Rella give evidence over the last two days and he's finally accepted the digital conduct in question. Um, if you were revisiting your decision again in light of that evidence, what would you conclude? Roberto agreed in the end he would pay, and the company agreed that we would support him in the operation and fund the deal until he was out of the building to pay. A slightly different question. Um, you're here on, on Tuesday morning, and Mr. Rella accepted the cross the line against yes. the policies. Monday morning. Monday morning. Monday morning. Yes. Absolutely not. Uh, Mr. Kadri, two, two short questions if you could help me on this. Uh, can you tell me what the problem was in relation to ins the insurance company? What, was it that the, the cost was going over the limit or that uh, this was a uh, procedure that wasn't insured? 
Why, why was it that the insurance company was refusing to pay out? Your Honor, there was a two-part problem. The first part is, and I'm not an expert, but as I understood the situation, because of the precondition, they needed more documentation evidencing the background to the case, and they were demanding more documentation. So part of the issue that they were not agreeing to the problem, to, they wanted to have the history and information before they would render a decision if they get the insurance or not. The second thing is... Sorry, that, sorry if I just stop you there. Is, is, is that... Um, is that an insurance company saying we didn't accept this risk because we weren't told about a, pre -con a precondition? Yes. It's, it's that sort of problem? Yes. Yes, thank you. And the other point? And the other one was, from the insurance company's perspective, there was another neurosurgeon present who, who actually was in the operating table. So from their perspective, they had no reason why to pay for more than what was required for the operation. The fact that the patient required an additional one which was Dr. Rogers, they didn't feel that that was part of, that, that, that part of the claim would be honored by that. I see. So, so they, they thought they only had to pay for one surgeon. Yeah, the, Dr. Benny, which was yeah. the city hospital neurosurgeon, was in the surgery, yeah. and they were billed for him. So that, that was the reason? Yeah, they so they're, they're saying, we, you can't charge us for more than one neurosurgeon. Thank you. That's what my understanding was. Thank you. The, se the second matter that is very short one, if you look at bundle B2, Turn to page 303. Yes. That's a copy of a trademark registration certificate. Yes. Which uh, informs us that the trademark was registered on the 10th of September 2012. But if you go over the page, uh, if this is part of the same document, which it looks as if it probably is, the document seems to have been issued on the 26th of May, 2013. Now, it was put to you that you received this document on or about the 10th of September, 2012. Do you actually remember when you received this document? No, sir. The trademark was done by a trademark office, and. I don't even know when the application was actually made, and I don't remember when it received, but I don't... Well, that's all I need to know. Yeah, I don't know. It was, it was I, had no I had no awareness of... It was received yeah, in, I had no in awareness. September, and I, I wondered if you did actually remember that. And I don't, I, I, I don't, it could have actually been received on the 26th of May. I don't remember. I don't you know. Don't, you don't remember. I don't know. I, and I was, I was, that, wasn't a, that wasn't an important issue for me. Really? Once the application was made, I didn't, I didn't think about or ask about it later after that, Your Honor. Thank you. Uh, so I, I can't have questions arising out of it. Uh, very well. We, thank you, Mr. Cadley. That completes your evidence. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, and you don't need to stay there any longer. Uh, I think um, someone should take the dust of the book. We'll... Uh, we're going to have who? Mr. Mugara? Mugara, the Mugavera next, shall we? You want to go? No, no, no you, you can go. We have Mr. Mugavera next. Yes. Um, well, I think we'll sit at 2 o'clock to have Mr. Mugavera.